Hello my friends, John LaRuffa here with another Straight Up Solo, and in this episode, I'm going to talk to you about the top 10 games that I played in the first quarter of 2024. And I'm going to try to do this a little more often, because what this is, show is about is kind of the games that I go to. They could be old, they could be new, and I think it's interesting to see, you know, what, it, what calls to me from my shelf, and maybe I'll share some of those things that uh, might inspire you to check out some of these deals. I mean, so not, these aren't necessarily the top games of all time or anything like that, but these are the ones that I got off the shelf repeatedly over and over in the last three months. All right, so the first one I want to talk about is Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth. And specifically, I was playing the Shadowed Paths expansion, okay? Now, for those of you who don't know what this game is, this is a very interactive app driven game. It is interactive in the fact that you build your stuff out, you put stuff all over the, uh, your, your map kind of expands as you explore, but you have to use the app. And for people who don't like apps, this is not going to be the game for you. But for those who do and who also appreciate the fantasy flight style of that kind of exploring and quest and story driven game, lots of really cool stuff in that one. I played the full um, Shadowed Paths expansion. I think it was like 12 or 13 different uh, missions uh, or scenarios or games or whatever, however you want to look at it. Had a great time playing them. Very cool. I loved the feeling of always that, that angst of I've got to get all this stuff done before I fail the quest and the threat meter's going up. Just a great game. And I really do like the mechanics behind that game. The combat and everything being driven by your deck of cards, which you can improve upon and build and customize from game to game with different skills and different uh, focuses. I just think it's a really cool game. So if you like that sort of thing, feel free to check it out. I, I think it's one of the one of the more um, fun games to take off the shelf every now and then. Now, I will say this, <clears throat> having played it for that, that time, I'm going to put it back on the shelf for a while. Because... It is a game that I love to dive deep into for a while and then put away for a little bit. And I'll see it maybe, you know, in six months or a year. Um, but but I just, I really enjoy it when I do break it out. All right. My number two game, I, I shouldn't say number two because there's, these are no particular orders, so to speak. Um, but the second game I played a lot of or that I'm going to talk about was Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Now, I don't have it because I burned it because I finished it. Uh, and that's what I did for that legacy game. I used it for campfire fuel. It was such a good game. Such a good game. And I had started playing that game three years ago and then set it aside. And just hadn't picked it up. Hadn't picked it up. It wasn't the right time. wasn't the right time. And the years went by and this thing was sitting here calling me. And I, I just didn't, I didn't pull it off the shelf and, and dig back into it. But once I did, I'm like, oh, this is not leaving the table until I finish this. The story was cool. The suspense was cool. I, I love legacy games and the fact that they really make you play for keeps. And that is very cool. Now, I know they're once and dones. And so that is the bummer about them. But they also put this, this um, impetus on really paying attention and making every game a somewhat serious uh, event because if you blow it, if you keep losing, things are going to get worse for you. You know, especially in that game, the board state is a permanent situation. So if you start to really make bad choices, that's going to snowball into more and more difficulty in the future. But the the story is really cool, and for those who haven't played a pandemic legacy game, I think it is one of the better, probably the the best in, in the, of the three that I've played. But it's also pretty uh, pretty hard in in its complexity compared to the other ones as far as a departure from the standard pandemic. Yeah, the standard pandemic's still there, but you have a lot of different things going on. You have different aliases. You have different, um, <clears throat> just a whole different way of the, the, the type of things you're doing is just very different from seasons one and two. So really good game, especially if you like Cold War style-esque and writing, or st style writing in, in that time period, really cool. Okay, my next one I'll talk about is the Seventh Citadel. Now, specifically, I've been playing, and I'm on the last one of Data Chem's. I think that's how you say that. Um, Data Chem's Awakening. This has been an awesome, awesome experience for those who like the survival, but more on the exploration side than the Seventh Continent. So, what I think is really cool about the Seventh Citadel 
is that I get the feeling that I am playing for keeps every single time. It gives me that same feeling that I got with the Lord of the Rings Journey of the Middle Earth and even the same feeling of uh, a legacy game in the fact that you, if you blow it, there's going to be serious consequences. But unlike a legacy game, I don't have to tear up and destroy components or whatever else. Now, you you do, once you go through things like that, it's just like going through um, uh, any other app-driven game that's story-based. You kind of know. There'll be less variety. But in this game, they do a good job in breaking it up. And if you, if you succeed in a scenario, you go this way. If you fail in a scenario, you go that way. And of course, all the stuff you can find, the, the, the world is pretty immense. There's a lot to explore. There's a lot to uncover. There's a lot of, when you go to grab a certain card, there might be seven of those types of cards in the deck or in the box. So you won't see the same thing over and over. Uh, but it's a very enjoyable game for those who, who want to take the plunge. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to finishing that last scenario. And then... I'm only going to put it away for a while just because I don't want to just chug through it all. I'll probably put it away for a month and then get to get going on the next threat um, kind of uh, scenario. And I, I think that's really just, it's just been very, very fun. I might even bust out Seventh Continent again uh, just to experience that and see if whatever I learned with Seventh Citadel, do I have some of those transferable skills to, you know, survive in Seventh Continent a little bit more? Who knows? We'll see. All right. The next one I want to talk about really checks the box for fun factor. Over and over again, I have set this one up, and every time I've played it, I enjoy it. And it is Sankore Pride of Mansa Musa. Now, here's the deal with this game. First of all, as you can, as you can see from the back of the box, it's a very, very intricately detailed, nice-looking game. And I just think it looks fun. It looks fun. It's enjoyable to the play. The actions are cool. Everything about it I like except for one thing. It is so tedious to set up. That's the only problem I have with it. Everything else is fantastic. I can play that game over and over again. And it has been a real surprise and one that I have just constantly brought back in week after week. Let's set it up. It's been a couple of days. Boom. Let's play it. All right. Let's take it down. All right, go down something else, come back. Hey, you know what? I feel like Sincore again. Let's do it again. And I have recently just gotten, um, I scored a win again the other day, and it was really cool because I've been on a losing streak, unfortunately, where that bot has been outsmarting me. And this time I kind of reversed things on him at the last minute with the way the scoring went. And it was really fun, really enjoyable game. Love that game. And it will definitely stay in my collection forever. I do not see that one going anywhere. And the best part about it is, too, even though it's, it's you know, a couple of weeks between plays or a couple of days between plays, I remember how to play it pretty simply over and over again. It's very self-explanatory. There's just a little review I need, and I can just get right back into it, which I really like. All right. Another one that continues to come back over and over. Huge fun factor for me. Scholars of the South Tigris. So... This game, again, is one of those games, and I hear the components dumping, yeah. uh, this game is one of those games that just for me looks super fun and is super fun. It is a rewarding game to play over and over again. I've played it uh, a ton of times. It's, it's, it's by far cut above my favorite Shem Phillips game, and I'm extremely excited for the inventors of the South Tigris. If they happen to do just as well, I'll be elated. I like a lot of the other ones, don't get me wrong, but for whatever reason, Scholars is just, 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 it's, it's really, really enjoyable. I love the challenge that the AI gives you without you feeling like you're just going to get slaughtered. Uh, sometimes I can win, sometimes I can't, um, and I'm, a, I'm only playing on the second level. I don't play it easy anymore. I finally upgraded to the second level, but uh, it's just, it's, it's really fun to grab those contracts, to fulfill a strategy, to pull in something else, and to try to keep going with that. I just, I love it. I will continue to play that one over and over again. And I highly recommend it if you can get through the learning curve of that game solo. It is a tough game to learn for whatever reason from the rule book. I struggled with it. Once it all clicked, though, it was absolutely worth it to me. And I've played it so many times. It's definitely been worth worth the effort. 
All right, another one. This one on the other end of the spectrum, very, very easy but to learn and play, but also enjoyable. And a nice looking game is World Wonders. Now, this game is one that I describe as almost more fun than it has any right to be. I mean, it's not that complex of a game, but it's simple, it's pretty quick. You can bust it out, set it up, play it and be done with it in 45 minutes. It's enjoyable. It's for the most part a beat your own score, even though that there are there's a scoring mechanic for the solo game. Um, you know, you you kind of feel like it's going to score roughly in the same range most every time, but it provides the tension of a different player because they could take your wonders away from you, and when they do that, it's really frustrating. Just a really fun game to play, and I just think it looks cool to build a bunch of different wonders on the board, and it's a it's a fun tile laying game. One that I highly recommend, and I'm really glad that I got. Uh, nothing super, super mind-boggling or, 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 you know, amazingly different about it. Just fun, and I like it. All right, continuing on here in, again, no particular order. Here's one that I looked at and said, you know, it's time. Oh, Got to get this one. It's time. It's time to do this again. It's a great game. I've always loved it. I like to play it again, and that is Railroad Inc. I have the the full content box with all the stuff. I bought this a while ago, um, and I like bringing this, bringing this out. It, to me, it is one of those that checks a box of, I really don't feel like playing anything mind-boggling tonight. I just want to play something comfortable. I want to play something that I fully understand, that I can make decisions on, but don't have to, you know, completely melt down trying to agonize over things. Just want to roll some dice, put them where they belong, draw some stuff, accomplish some objectives, and then maybe throw in a couple of weird, you know, conditional expansions or whatever and, and spruce it up a bit. And I had a great time and I will continue to have a great time playing this game. I also play it in the app form. I like to play it on Board Game Arena. It's just a fun game and it's really quick and very easy to kind of wind down with. And I've had a, a, a plenty of time this, this quarter needing some wind down time. So the Railroad Inc. has provided that for me in spades. Really appreciate that. All right, going in a completely different now, different direction. Brain Burner par excellence and Mind Melter 1862. This is an 18xx game. If I've done reviews on this, I've done playthroughs. A huge, very, very mathy, very, very strategic and difficult game to play well. <clears throat> but I love it. I love setting it up getting myself in that mode and then digging in and then trying to do the absolute best with the best routes, trying to see when the trains are gonna rust, trying to get the route out that I need, upgrading in key spots, mergers and acquisitions and cool stuff like that, uh, splitting stocks, that little side game of trying to get the stocks to come out and then the frustration when a company you know goes out of the game and it blocks me right where I wanna be just a really fun game, if that's your cup of tea. 18xx games are not for everybody, there's no doubt about it. And I unfortunately have only played the 1862 because the rest of them require multiplayer people and everything else. This one plays really well solo, I love it. All right, complete surprise for the next one that I didn't know, but I was hopeful, and it really, really hit the mark, and that is Inventions evolution of ideas this one another one with artwork by Ian O'Toole the game board itself look at that look at that beauty just looks super fun and it is super fun this is a tactical masterpiece and I mean that it is one of my favorite tactical games yes it's new but when you see when you know what a good tactical game looks and feels like boom there it is all sorts of different actions, all sorts of different chains, all sorts of different ways that you can turn one move into another move into another move. There's variable scoring conditions. It's It's got a very interactive board. The bot is not too bad to run. I wish there was, um, I wish the bot had a little better player aid, even though it has its own thing, just a little bit better. So I'd have to keep the rule book next to us, but, or uh, next to me when I'm playing. But either way, it's still good. It's just, uh, it's just a fantastic game. Love it. I will continue to play it. It's, it seems like it's one that's gonna be in the regular rotation where I'm gonna break it out every couple of weeks, make sure I get my fix, you know what I mean? And, and that one's just been, just been awesome, just been awesome. Okay, and the, let's see, I think the last one here, the last one is Imperium Horizons. All right, 
This game, unfortunately, the back of the box couldn't be more boring. I mean, I don't know. It's funny because the game was so great and the back of it makes makes it look like you're going to get a, a subscription to the encyclopedia or something. Really, really just drab. But so cool. Everybody who's watched my channel knows how much I like that game and all the types of games, the legends and the classics and everything. But Imperium Horizons has taken it up another level with that trade mechanic. And the trade mechanic just gives you another dimension of things to consider and enjoy. A whole another set of basically like actions that you charge up until you get this big profit action and it can really be cool. And the uh, the different factions or, or races or whatever you want to call them in there have really been a joy to try out. I've liked them all. I, I really, really appreciate that they they made it even a little, it just seems like they made it easier to play the solo mode. Maybe it's just because they printed them on the cards or whatever, but I felt like I can follow the solo steps a little bit faster. Also, I've kept myself current on that. Played it multiple times in the last couple of months since I've gotten it. And it's a real fun game. And if you haven't tried it out, I highly recommend you do it if you like those kinds of solo card driven games with some very asymmetric player powers. Um, and you know, it's it's one of those things that it's good. To, the first game you're gonna you're gonna tumble through, you're gonna trip and fall and this and that. But once you figure out the rhythm, you can figure out that this game provides such an awesome bossa nova dance between you and what's going on with the AI. And it's just really, really fun. And there's so many factions, so many matchups you can do. The content is literally endless. I mean, just because of the combinations. So I've had a great, great quarter. It's been a lot of fun. These games, amongst the new ones I've tried to, but these are the ones that I keep bringing back off the shelf, playing again, and really enjoying. Please let me know in the comments what you've been playing, what you've been enjoying. Maybe there are games that I own that you've been getting into deep, and that's awesome. Maybe there's something I haven't heard of that you've really been enjoying, and, and I'd like to check it out. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And you know, I always appreciate the support. I appreciate you subscribing to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And thank you again for all the feedback you give me. It is appreciated. So as I always say, I hope that whatever you do in the future, you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.